All right, we're going to look at the stock market now, and we're going to do this differently than we normally do. I'm bringing you our proprietary charts. These are the chart grids that we share with our level four and level four members with our proprietary indicators. Since we're uh, in our period here of the uh, SLIM give the gift uh, period where uh, you can give the gift to anybody, uh, including yourself, uh, I want to show you really what's included in level four as we look at this deep analysis uh, in, uh, for, in the stock market, S&P 500, NASDAQ, and the Russell. I'm going to the multiple chart grid that we have in here, and I'm going to show you four different charts on each of these three indexes, and you'll learn a lot by looking at this. I know this, for those of you that are first looking, and I'm zoomed out pretty far here a couple of years, um, this is a uh, busy chart. There's a lot on here and a lot of notes, uh, which our members really get to be familiar with. What we're looking at the bottom here are cycle brackets. These are the guides to help us see the rhythms in the market. There's actually two on here. The grayed out one right there is uh, one that's a little smaller and was a little older. And the dotted one is one that's a little longer and uh, a cycle that was just recently recognized on uh, the 21st of November. So what we look at, you know, we're always revising and looking at these cycles so that we can better understand them. And cycles are essentially the rhythms in the market. Money flows. And when cycles are formed very bullishly, where they rally most of the time and have small corrections, that's called the right-hand translation. And when you get that, it's a very high probability the next cycle will also be a positive cycle, at least surpassing the previous high. The yellow oval areas are the, where the little corrective periods are. And when the top comes earlier, well, then those are much bigger corrective periods. Uh, when the top is late, as you see in each of these cycles, the corrections are small. We had looked for a pullback uh, in the stock market of about uh, four, we said four and a half to six percent. The decline in here in the S&P 500, right in here in that two-week period, was 5.2%. Our target was right down over here, about 4,500. It got down to about 4,495, uh, and we said it would be at the most probably 250 points, and that is very close to what it was. So we call this one a bullseye, well, maybe slightly off the mark, because we thought that the low would come a little bit later. It actually bottomed about three days earlier than the earliest time frame that we thought so, thought it would do that. However, this big up week that you see right over here, it's kind of buried in our lines, uh, is big enough to confirm that we are now in the next minor rising phase that you see right over there, which aligns very closely with the, uh, with the shorter grayed out one here, all of this arising phase. That's why what we believed that the low would be made in December, in, somewhere in between these two time range lines, and you could see it was just on the outside of that, and that it would go to a new high. That's the highest probability. The projections that we have are either stalling at that minor 61.8 and then turning back down, or being m more aggressive on the long side and getting up over here to about 48.70. That's the bottom of that Fib extension. There's a dominant 78.6 at around 48. Uh, 90 or so. So 4870 to 4890 is the outside. That's why we said in the beginning of the show that we thought it would be um, maybe only about 1 or 2% above the old high before uh, the uh, longer term um, cycle patterns that you see right over here before those come into play. I'm going to go far out here for you to see uh, how, how those line up. And you can see it coming down right in here. When they were both coming down right in this area right there, that gave you a very significant decline uh, out into this corrective period back in uh, uh, way, way, way back here in 2018. So we're getting into a period right in here that is a lot of risk. That aligns with our monthly patterns and our quarterly patterns, which all suggest that the stock market will have a rough period into the middle of next year. And we talked in the beginning of the show that we thought it would be a significant uh, uh, top 
uh, and we're getting into this very risky period. So you can see we're projecting down to that 20% uh, decline, which is a bear market, but it could go further than that. And there could be more than just this decline uh, time-wise, which goes into the middle of next year. It could be uh, a longer period of time based on the fact that it has a lot of correcting to do based on how far it is from the, uh, the, the average uh, growth rate uh, and how far it is above uh, the uh, GDP rate. So all of that makes it massively overpriced and sets up a pretty good size correction. Uh, we're going to do a big picture video where I'll show those long-term charts uh, just in the next couple of weeks. So that's a look at the weekly chart. And I'm going to go a little bit faster now because I've explained all of that. Here's your daily chart. And what this daily chart is, it has in there our uh, complex cycle structures. Uh, and you can learn more about that uh, by becoming an ASLIM member. And you can see in here that the normal structure has two uh, different, uh, the lower uh, two different channels in there. When it blasts off into the uh, a third channel up on the top, that is really shows you that there's a tremendous amount of strength. The magnitude of this advance was very strong. Still, it wasn't strong enough yet to turn our uh, option bias indicator, you could see right over here, it's yellow. It went neutral from green. You see all of this positive period right in here. And then it turned yellow right here. So it's still neutral. And this needs to confirm and turn positive. If it doesn't do that, it says that longer term trends are starting to weigh on it. So we're going to be looking for this to turn green. And that's a P3 level, we call that. And right now it is at neutral still. That's an important indicator, option bias indicator at neutral. This is the momentum conditions right now. And this is the slim ribbon right in here and shown in um, a, uh, a different form than we normally show it on this show. Uh, because it's it's in these uh, it gives you these shaded areas in here, and it has turned positive again. So it went negative for a brief period of time. The slim ribbon PO turned neutral right over here, and now uh, the slim ribbon is green and positive, and that gives you an indication that it is likely that for the short term there is upward momentum uh, that will continue to help the market move to the long side to the upside. Here you have our two hour charts, which are really phenomenal. And on the bottom of that uh, is the, um, the, uh, the two indicators, the slim ribbon PO, which you could see when it turned negative in here, it was giving you these negative resumption momentum condition signals. And then the slim ribbon, uh, this is our market condition indicator. And again, these, this is proprietary. You need to be a level four member to get these indicators. And it, when it comes down and tests under the 25, doesn't get below the minus 25 right here, and then turns back up, that is positive. What that says is that the longer term conditions are still driving it to the upside, and that is a very positive condition. Look right over here, the slim ribbon turned positive. The slim ribbon to PO turn green, and you get this upward resumption for momentum signal right over there on that green arrow. All of this is positive. So that was a look at the S&P 500. Now we'll look at the NASDAQ, and you'll see a very similar occurrence in here, though the NASDAQ didn't quite get the size of the launch on the upside, but pretty close. Hit those support areas just perfectly. The timing wise was just a little bit early right over here. This is that longer S&P cycle that we're looking at. And you can see that we have both projections in here. This is coming up and testing the old high just above those FIB confluences. And this is the uh, uh, bottom of that FIB extension. That's about 17,200. That's about a thousand points up from right here. This uh, old high right over there and those FIB confluences, that's just at around 16, uh, or between the area of 16.6 uh, .6 and 16.8. That could be where it stops in here, or it could take the upper track. The upper track is the highest probability right now, as it is in the S&P 500. So we're going to look for those levels, 17,200, unless it tells us something different, 
along the way. Let's look at the short-term pattern right in here in these complex structures, and you can see that this is actually not uh, as positive. This was a more negative uh, cycle right in here on the minor cycle. It gets right into these resistance zone between the 61.8 and the 78.6 and this Fib extension area and is struggling a bit. And this is despite Apple. Apple, of course, a heavyweight in here and Apple up at an all-time high as I speak right now, but this is not uh, be, been able to have, give you the quite the upside magnitude or get through the resistance areas. So we would rate this a little bit weaker based on the pattern than we see in the S&P 500. So it's going to have to give us a positively configured pattern in here and not break down sharply off of these levels in order to uh, give us something really positive. This level uh, down over here, which is the uh, supports from the weekly low and, and below that 55, 500 would be a very bad occurrence if it got below those supports and down there and that would be a breakdown and would give us a reason uh, for concern. Here we have the momentum conditions very much like what we showed uh, in the uh, the uh, S&P 500 uh, as the momentum now has turned positive in here and it's likely to be driving it on the upside. Uh, when we look at that. Uh, let's go back uh, here and you can see again uh, on this daily chart that the OBI, the option bias indicator is neutral in here. Look while it was green in here and you can see the upward force that it was giving the market. It was just super powerful. Then it turned neutral, which isn't that bad. You can see in here where it was negative uh, down over here. And when you see these uh, lighter green dots, it's uh, even more slightly oversold. So there was a lot of downside pressure here. And then it went neutral and then turned positive, And now it's neutral again. So it has some work to do in order to give us some sense that it is positive. And again, this pattern not as strong as the S&P 500. Here's your upward momentum, which has improved on the short term on the NASDAQ. And here is your two hour chart. Now this looks a lot like the S&P 500, which it had these uh, sell warnings. And here it was a little choppier as you got into this downward movement. Right here it turned neutral. Here's where it turned positive and this turns green. And now you get this upward resumption for momentum signal there. The Aslim market condition indicator comes down and tests the swing zone, which is what we want to see it do, and then move up again, which is positive. And this is all fairly positive when you look at that. So a, a lot of good things when we look here at the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. Uh, either they're positive or they're improving to positive is what we see. And here is the Russell, which is a very different picture. You can see in here the magnitude of the advance. Well, this is a reflection of the of interest rates. I said early in the show that it is fairly likely that uh, interest rates are going to go up and that it's not baked in the cake. And you can see that right here. Momentum, a downturn right in here on the intermediate where momentum on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ were both positive. So this is a much weaker condition here in the Russell. And uh, what we're looking, this was a 12.7% decline. It was a much bigger decline. And to us, that makes this a sell zone right in here. If it's able to get up above 2267 up to here about 2340, to us, that would be the best. And that's why we think that if the stock market overall makes a new high on the broad market, the Russell is very likely to underperform and then be the leader on the downside over here where we believe that the market is going to be moving down into the May July period uh, there with some uh, very hard selling we would expect there. So that's the weekly Russell. It's in much worse shape than uh, the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. Here's the complex patterns right in here. Whoops. And you can see that what we're looking at is a failure here in these minor resistances and a sell while it, uh, the S&P 500 got up into a th uh, a third channel way up here this is failing uh, in the in the second channel and that shows you the power in these resistance zones right in there we had it marked the sell zone and if it gets underneath this level at 2150 
that is going to be a very bad sign. Uh, I would watch that for the stock market because if this happens and gets under there, all of that is going to tell you that the stock market may not be able to do as well as just testing the old high uh, before the market does begin to move down. Now, right in here, this is really interesting because see these orange dots? That's, this is the option bias indicator. And when you get orange dots, it tells you there is an extreme situation and a reversal pending. Here you could see it called the top right over there and where the orange dots came right over here that is on our option bias study that made the bottom right there. So uh, that shows you extreme overbought, extreme oversold and really called uh, those turns on the stock market. But the Russell, as you see, is quite weak right now. Uh, right now, the option bias indicator is at neutral. Here is the momentum conditions, and look how horrible this is compared to the other indexes we showed you. Here you could see it was green and positive, and all these signals giving you upward movement. It then turned neutral, turned negative here, and it is still negative. And look at this negative signal right now on the, uh, the Slim Ribbon PO. That is showing you a lot of weakness right over here in the Russell, contrasting what we see in the other indexes. Here is just the beauty of uh, looking at these patterns in here. Here's where you had a negative downward turn uh, right there. Uh, this was on November 15th. The Slim Ribbon PO turns red as the Slim Ribbon goes into a negative configuration. You get downward resumptions right in here, as you can see, and it turned neutral. It gave you a little positive reading, but now it's turned neutral and red again. This is really an indication of the weakness that we see in here. Look at this market condition indicator. It was positive way up here in the 90s. It rolled down, gave you a test of the 25, breaks below the minus 25. It's a negative cross and continues to be in very negative condition. So this shows you the amazing contrast between these indicators. So that is a look at the two hour chart in the Russell and at the Russell, very negative. Here's your S&P weekly, your S&P daily. Let's go back to that weekly a second. Momentum conditions in here, still positive on the weekly. Here's your daily, here's your momentum strong. And uh, this is your NASDAQ, uh, the beginning of a rising phase and momentum in there is strong moving up. That's the reversal scout. Here's your formation in here, a little weaker than the S&P 500. Momentum strong and uh, an upward positive turn there on the market condition indicator. And here is the much weaker Russell as uh, we expect it to move up and fail again. And conditions in here much weaker as it moves down from the sell zone. Uh, conditions here on the daily short term momentum bad and negative and negative signals and in here a very weak condition on the two hour charts. All of those charts available to you, uh, all you have to do is become a uh, level four member at AskSlim and you can do that by clicking on this green button on AskSlim.com uh, and that will take you to our special gift memberships and here if you uh, take uh, membership uh, number Three, which is uh, our uh, level four membership. You're uh, going to get our charts live on Thinkorswim. Uh, you'll be able to do that uh, and we're gonna send you back a $100 gift card to help you pay for that. Level four plus, uh, uh, get to have custom chart work from us and interact with us much more. And we're gonna send you back a $150 uh, gift card. Uh, if you sign up for those, you get all of this uh, fantastic information. If you don't wanna sign up as a level four member, sign up as level three, and you will still get our information. This is the ASLEM rankings. This is a fantastic information that you see in here. Uh, and that gives you all of our rankings on long-term, intermediate, short-term, our option bias indicator, and you get our charts right over here. But they're in static form, they're not live. Uh, and we update those all the time. And you can see in here, well, here's gold. Uh, as you can see, it's been negative, the GDX, and there's the uh, future right over there, very negative. But here I want you to see the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Russell. And you can see that uh, the three to six week outlook favors, um, in this case, we're waiting for the OBI to turn positive to go to very bullish, but it is bullish. The NASDAQ is bullish, 
and the Russell is slightly bearish, neutral to slightly bearish. All of these are the uh, important indicators you can get. And of course, you can still see our charts, and I'm just going to click on the uh, S&P 500 for you to see, and it'll blow that chart up for you. So uh, you can uh, see our chart work on the weekly. You can see our chart work on the daily uh, just by becoming a level three member. Use that special gift membership right there uh, for level three or level four, and you'll be able to see uh, these charts. Thanks for watching that Ask Slim special video. Now take a quick peek at our annual Ask Slim holiday special. Great holiday gifts for traders and investors. Give the gift of Ask Slim. These are our special rates, in fact the lowest of the year for three month memberships and they are non-recurring. So if you give this gift to somebody, you won't get billed again and they won't get billed again either. Give the gift to someone you know who loves trading and investing or give the gift to yourself. It's great for first time members at AskSlim.com to really see what we do. Use this special to try a higher level if you're already an AskSlim member and do that for three months. And then we're going to give you a bonus gift. We're going to send you an Amazon gift card that's going to help you pay for part of these memberships that you give to somebody or give to yourself. Let's take a look as we go to the Ask Slim page in here. And this is the main page. And what I want you to do is to go to the very top, as you can see, that line for our holiday specials, and then click on this little green box, save 30% or more, and that's going to take you to our special um, holiday page where we have these offers. And you'll be able to see that there are four different gift options, and those are for our level two, three, four, and four plus members. And you can see that we're going to give you back an Amazon gift card, depending on which one you take for level two, level three, level four, or level four plus. So if you take level four, you're going to be able to get a hundred dollar gift card back for that three month membership. And then we have the list in here of everything that's included in each of those memberships, just a tremendous amount of content that is both educational and analytical. There's no place you're going to learn more than what we teach with our amazing staff of four analysts that teach you all of the time the great things you need to know about trading and investing. So please do go to AskSlim.com and take a look at those holiday specials and give that gift of Ask Slim. Thank you very much for listening.